Hi, and welcome back to the Regular Guy's Guide to Changing Your Brake Pads on a Ford Freestyle. This is part two of two. Due to YouTube restrictions, time length, I just break this video into two parts. This assumes you've seen part one. Here's our wheel. We're going to pick up where we left off, which is beginning with the rotor replacement. Continue to use all typical safety precautions. Let's begin. Putting it back together is pretty much the reverse of what you did to take them apart. Slide the rotor back on and into place. You'll notice I'm not going to put that Torx bolt back in. There's a reason for this, and I didn't show it to you on the other side of the car. I stripped it trying to remove it, and I had to drill that bolt out. It was a big drag, and I just don't really see a reason to use it, so I'm just never going to use them again, and I've discarded them. Use your own judgment on this issue. On to the bracket. The bracket has stainless steel clips that sit inside the ends, and you can replace those. Uh, you don't have to. I've decided not to, because these are still in good shape. I'm just going to use my paper towel and the alcohol to clean out the dirt and grime in the crevices there where the pads float. If you see any cracking or issues, you can go to the auto parts store and get the clips to replace them. They just snap in and snap out. And your bracket needs to go back into place. You have to feed that bolt through and catch the threads. And this can take a minute because you're a regular guy. Everything's kind of moving, the, the, the bar there, the, the bolt, the, the rotor. Of course, if I put that little Torx bolt back in, uh, it would hold the rotor in place and make it a little easier. But I think they're evil, so I've decided not to. You get those in place, and you grab your ratchet, and you're going to tighten those down. While I do this, I want to go over a few things. One is to always do both wheels at the same time. Do not replace the brake pads on one wheel and say run an errand and then replace them on the other wheel. You should always do them both at the same time. Next is to, even if you're tempted, do not lubricate the bolts or any part of the brake system that is not supposed to be lubricated. There's only some very small areas that require it and the rest of it is supposed to be dry. And last, how tight to make these bolts. When you remove bolts in a project like this, always try to note how hard it was to remove them so when you put them back on, you can duplicate the torque. A torque wrench is a great investment, and these bolts do have torque specs, which I could not find. But I believe the bracket bolts require about 100 to 120 foot-pounds, and the caliper bolts about 50 to 55 foot-pounds. These are just estimates, and you should do your own research to find them, or just make them good and tight. If you're wondering why it looks like I'm tightening the reverse, it's because I had to flip this image for the video, so don't be alarmed. So now it's time to grab your high temperature brake grease and you're going to put it in those grooves in the stainless steel clips. Uh, this will give the pads uh, some lubrication so that they can float back and forth inside of those slots. It's about the only part of the brake pad that touches anything is uh, just along those clips and in those grooves. Don't go overboard, but put plenty of grease in there. Do not get the grease on the rotor. You want to stay away from that. Grab the caliper and you need to bottom the pistons. Take your block of wood, put it in there, and kind of like you did when you pushed it down with the brake pad to get it off, you want to push the block of wood with your C-clamp to bottom the piston. Uh, just take it all the way down and it'll make it much easier to put the, the caliper on. And now it's time to put your pads in finally. Grab your pads and you're going to slip them into that slot into the bracket, top and bottom. It should just slide in like that. Pop them in there. You can square it up. You can grab the other pad and put it in on the other side just the same way. No secrets here. Um, oh, except for this. You want to coat the back of the pads with some of that brake grease. So just rub a bunch there. You pretty much want to put it where the pistons contact it, but you can wipe it across the whole back. Just put a big pile of goo there and that helps the pads operate properly and not squeal and stuff and uh, slip your pad into the slot on the other side. No secrets here. You'll notice I haven't put grease on that first pad. Don't worry, I eventually do it. Uh, it won't go in there dry. Time to put your caliper on. Grab your caliper. Your pistons are bottomed out, so you have plenty of room to stick it on. You can lose the, uh, the bungee cord now. That's done. And you just uh, pop it into place, just like that. You'll see the brake grease really is there. And there's your little uh, slides. Just make sure it, you can push those in. They just float back and forth. Push those in and get them in the right position. You'll know. And um, grab your bolts. Time to put those in. Again, at this point, you're pretty much working in reverse. 
the top bolt goes in and gets tightened, the bottom bolt goes in and gets tightened, and uh, just make those bolts nice and tight. When I'm done with that, I like to slide the caliper back and forth on the slides just to make sure it feels okay and uh, everything seems correct. It should slide back nicely. It won't be much room though with new pads. You are almost done. Grab your tire and you can put it on. This process is obvious, but I will mention two things. The pattern that you should tighten the bolts and how tight you should make them. Once the wheel is on the ground, you want to grab your torque wrench if you've got one. Uh, you want to tighten lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds and you want to tighten them in a star pattern like that. Fancy animation there for you. If you don't have a torque wrench, that's okay. But it's great if you do, you get used to the amount of force you have to put on it. It is possible to damage the bolts from over tightening, uh, even so much that it might result in a replacement. So you want to avoid that, but of course you want those lug nuts to be tight so your wheel doesn't fall off. So there we are. You want to take your car off the jack, and there's one last thing to do. I'll hop in the driver's seat, and uh, you bottom those pistons, so you got to push hydraulic fluid back into the system. You want to slowly pump your brake until you push it back in. The first push will probably go to the floor, but then it'll get less and less, and you'll know when you're there. It'll be nice and tight. Go for a little test drive. Make sure everything feels okay. Of course, you've done both wheels, and you are done. You just saved yourself a couple hundred bucks, and you did it yourself. So in review, tips be safe, use common sense. Uh, I like to have my parts and tools ready so I don't have surprises halfway through when the brake's off and I can't go anywhere. Check your work uh, and take your time. Enjoy saving money and being a regular guy. I like the satisfaction of doing it myself. And now I'm down to about probably 40 minutes per side, so I can do it pretty quickly. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this helps someone. You can send your accolades and your criticisms to the following address. Have a good day.